Well, it's summer holidays. Uh, Jonas and I decided the best thing to do is leave the kids and the grandkids to it, and we'll get out and do some filming. So we're out in North Wales. Uh, for us, it's really quite close. And we're at a Tesla supercharger that's open to all. Uh, just going to introduce Jonas. Can you spin the camera around? Ooh, see if I can do this. There we go. Whoa, there we go. these days. So Jonas is with us. Reminds me I need a haircut. <laughs> yeah, Dave will get the same one. <laughs> So there we go. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at, this is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. We've got real miles up that way. We've got the motorway miles that way. Uh, this really is the middle of nowhere. So why has Tesla chosen this particular location? What's in it for the hotel? What's in it for Tesla? So we're going to find a seat and we're going to have a chat and Jonas will butt in as and when he likes. Get an awful lot of viewer comments about where chargers are located, uh, specifically because I'm a Tesla driver, where Tesla chargers are located. Uh, for example, I get a lot of calls, a lot of comments from people in the Northeast, uh, and over there there's very, very few chargers about. So we've come today to, uh, we're just into North Wales, and we're off the motorway by several miles. Uh, in fact, the motorway's good distance away. There's a dual carriageway that goes through, which is the expressway. Uh, but even that's a couple of miles away. And we're here at Flint Mountain, which is a Tesla supercharger open to all. We're going to have a look at the chargers in a minute. Uh, but it just makes you think, why has Tesla chosen this location? Because as far as you can see, and if Jonas, I'm with Jonas, by the way, if he swings the camera around, right, you can see that's right over to the Wirral, a uh, long, long way away. Uh, and you've got to go right the way round for that. So this is not a logical location. Uh, so just thinking about it with my business hat on, what's going on here? And of course, the answer is that just up the road, we've got Rill and Prestatyn. And these are, and Landud now, and these are classic North Wales resorts. And these are the ones that if you live in Liverpool or Manchester or Preston or Lancaster or Chester, uh, these are right on your doorstep, 50, 60 mile away. It's, it's, it's easy traveling just for the day out, certainly for a weekend. And of course, the holiday trade has been suffering in the UK, and it's simply because of the weather. Uh, people would rather spend money going abroad to France, Spain, Italy, Greece, uh, Tenerife, because they're guaranteed to have the weather. So all over the country, there is a... Uh, a, a, a Bit of a crisis in the holiday trade. Uh, I'm from Cornwall, spent about 40 years of my life down there. And of course, I know all about that, the seasonal holiday trade down there. Uh, I was a sales manager in a garage and the garage was dependent on everyone else having a really good tourist season to generate the money so that they can buy their new cars or used cars uh, at the end of the year. Uh, so we saw that, I saw that firsthand all the time. And so here you've got to look at why Tesla's here. And the answer is that there's not very much in the way of charging here. Uh, the next nearest one is about 20 mile away. That's uh, Chester East on the, on the motorway. Uh, but going into North Wales, it really is a very, very quiet location. And so when Tesla comes into the area and wants to talk to a, a suitable location, uh, they don't look for these remote locations. What they're looking for is um, a local uh, holiday, uh, a local hotel. Uh, and this is a holiday hotel for North Wales. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mutually um, beneficial arrangement because anyone going into North Wales up to real Prestat in Llandudno will need to charge at some point. And so this is a great location. But the hotel benefits, first of all, while cars are charging, people might well stop, have a meal, have a coffee, have a drink, uh, but they might also stay here. This could be the sort of doorway into, into North Wales and the beach resorts. So for the hotel, it's great. Cars arriving all the time, and it is quite a busy location, open to all, obviously, um, and it is right on the route into North Wales. So it makes a lot of sense uh, in the early days. This has been around for years. I've, I've been using this one for five years. Uh, so I know this has been around for a long time, but it hasn't been open to all for all that time. 
But this makes sense if you ignore the motorway traffic, which is miles away, and just look at the tourist traffic going past. Uh, and you can see or hear some of the cars. Shall uh, we take a look around the site? Let's have yeah. a look what we've actually got here. Yeah, uh, but look at the charging location. And this is a site which has a golf course. Uh, also has football golf. Uh, and that's one I've not played myself. Uh, but the hotel, lovely classic old building. There's a cracking restaurant in there and a bar. Might stick our head in in a minute and uh, have a look. Uh, but we're really, oh, you can see now, Jonas, if you can get this, uh, we've actually got um, 16 solar panels here, but on the roof at the back, we've got um, that's at least another 10, 20. So this one is piling up with PV panels and, of course, uh, the um, uh, heat pumps. So that can't all be just for the hotel, surely, that amount of power? It's a debatable point. It could be done for the revenue because they export the electricity, uh, but you don't get a stunningly good rate. Uh, but don't forget, hotels will always have lights on. They'll have the bar open, the kitchen. As we saw in the Holiday Inn with Stephen, uh, they've converted their cookers. So it's not converted. They've thrown out the old uh, gas cookers and put in electric ones. And that is using the power off the panels. We might have to ask them whether they've got uh, electric hobs in there. Yeah, we can do that in, the, in a minute. But again, a few more panels there tucked away. I didn't see those before. So there's quite a lot of panels going in here. And none of it will be for the chargers because that will be on a totally separate circuit. Uh, this is all for the hotel. So you've got to believe that this is probably going to be heading towards self-sufficient on a nice sunny day. Oh, well, there you go, foot golf. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know how you... I'd imagine you just kick the ball, kick the football instead of hitting the golf ball. Okay, um, so yeah, so you've got to imagine that the number of panels we're seeing here... Oh, that's a massive installation there. Um, you found more. What, oh, what, yes. What have we got there? Two... Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23, 24. It's about 30 panels. Uh, are we there. sure some of that isn't going into the EV chargers? No, it'll be on a totally separate circuit. That won't be coming straight off the hotel supply. Um, I can't believe it would. So, um, but these panels, they're around about 250, 300 kilowatts a panel. Uh, so that's a really sizable system. Plus what, oh, that's the, some more up there. Look at that, just a small bit of roof. And they've managed to cram in another six panels. So do we think this could be a, an owner that believes really in renewable energy? Is this just a, a sound business investment or is it actually that the owner is trying to push renewable energy, hence the Tesla charges and the solar panels? I think we need to go and ask him. But the answer is, I would suspect that They've been making effort. I've never noticed those panels before, and I have charged here on many occasions. And look at that, we're now full. Uh, eight chargers, every single one in use, every single one, apart from one. We've got a Polestar, but every other one is a Tesla. Um, so this is, again, showing that uh, the number of people who come here, and don't forget, these will be parked up for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, depending on state of charge. Uh, plenty of time to have a snack or a meal in the bar. So we need to actually go and have a look and see if we can find the owner and just ask him about, about that. Uh, but this shows the popularity of it. We, we've just come from Chester East where we were made a video we we're talking about uh, occupancy and uh, crowding and deserted hubs elsewhere in the country. Uh, but here in the Northwest, we're into North Wales here and um, yeah, when we arrived, there were three cars here. Uh, now we've got a full eight, all charging at once. So again, very popular, Rills just up the road. Uh, so it's an ideal location. It's quite a lot of cars. And uh, yeah. that's one of the things we tend to notice a lot of the time is that Tesla <laughs> utilization is a lot higher than most CPOs. Not all it of them, is. but- Now I'm just uh, gonna check my car because I'm doing a top up charge here. And I do not want to be charging there if, um, if I'm full and there's going to be other cars arriving. <laughs> so let me just check up. Where are we? Yeah, we're 
12 minutes remaining. So I need to get my car off charge before we go and try and find the, the owner. Uh, but it's great on a day like today. There's a bit of cloud about, but it's lovely and warm, nice and sunshine. And we've just had a look at all the overhead power. It goes absolutely everywhere apart from here. To get from there, that, that's going to be 330, 440,000 volts. To get down, you need a substation. And as far as we can see, we can't find a substation here. So that could be five miles away, uh, which is strange when you've got this much power right on your doorstep. No notice now we've got some people out playing football golf and proper golf. So while you're charging, you're not going to get a proper round of golf in. That's like, what, three or four hours? Oh, eight hours for me. Uh, but um, you might want to have a game of uh, football golf. I don't know how long that one takes. Uh, but it just shows that there's a lot going on here. Now we've had a wander around and we've had a word with people. Uh, we can't find a manager today, not on site, uh, but we have had one confirmation and that is all the solar panels that we've seen have nothing to do with Tesla whatsoever. They purely feed the hotel. But from Tesla, you can see since we've been here, we've only been here 20 minutes or so, and uh, it's really busy, cars in and out all the time. We've got a foreign one from the Netherlands there. Uh, so they come a long way for this. Now, from Tesla's point of view, it's really brilliant, really brilliant strategy that every car has got this perfect uh, GPS locator so you can find all the charges. So the car from the Netherlands, the Model S over there, uh, that will have, when it comes over to the UK, all the UK maps and everything and all the UK charges listed. So Tesla really makes it so easy to find these places. And you can see that now, we're back up to full. This is middle of nowhere and we've got a regular turnover of cars. And having been in the restaurant, uh, half of those are stuck in the restaurant now, eating, drinking or whatever. So that's it. Uh, so from uh, Flint Mountain in North Wales, just in North Wales, we're heading west into proper Wales. So I'm Dave and you? I'm Jonas. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go.